Hi, I'm Todd. I'm one of the Python developers at PsychoPy, and in this video I'm going to be showing you around some of the things that have changed in version 2021.1. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to show you is the uh, demos menu in Builder. So for those of you who've already unpacked your demos, um, you won't necessarily notice any difference other than there is now a button to browse on Pavlovia, which will open in your web browser, uh, the demos on Pavlovia, uh, and a handy button to open the demos folder, which will open in Windows Explorer. Uh, but if you um, re-unpack all of your demos, just move them to a safe folder and then unpack again, uh, we've sorted them into groups. So design templates are for the things that are like uh, a structure of an experiment that you can take the stimuli out, replace them with your own uh, as your design uh, needs. So things like the example of a branched experiment, psychophysics staircase, uh, randomized blocks. Um, experiments are you know, ready to go out of the box experiments. So like the BART task or the big five inventory, uh, which uses the form component, um, the Stroop task, that kind of thing. The feature demos are things which basically just show off a particular component and what it can do. Uh, so for example, the, the demo to show off what sliders are and what they can do, um, how to use the pump component. Um, tools are little um, bits and bobs that you can kind of copy and paste to your own experiment. So it's just like a single uh, thing that does something. So for example, like the clock face um, is a minimal version of the drag and drop demo, which just has you know, a single stimulus that you can drag around. And understanding PsychoPy are for demos which uh, help you to understand how PsychoPy works. A particularly eagle-eyed among you might notice that there's actually a few demos in there that are new, uh, in addition to just uh, things being moved around. I'm not going to go through them in this video, but please do feel free to just have an explore and then give some of them a try. If you click through to one of these demos and open it up, let's choose the progress bar, which is one of the new ones. Uh, you'll notice that this little window that pops up um, is styled now. So previously this was just um, flat text that could be edited. Um, this now supports a method of styling called Markdown. Um, it's relatively easy to understand. If we click Edit, we can open this file in Coda, and you can see that heading there, Progress Bar, has got a little hashtag next to it, and that subheading, how it works, has got two hashtags. Um, so that's that's Markdown. Um, you can also do things like denote that certain bits are code. Um, you can make things bold by putting asterisks either side of them, and that kind of thing. So it's just a nice little thing that makes it a bit easier to style the README files. Um, main thing to remember is to save them as a .md file um, to denote that they're Markdown. Um, another neat little addition um, is that the compile button has been split in two, similar to how in the last version we split the runner button in two. Um, so in addition to compiling to Python uh, as before, you can now also compile to JavaScript and it works pretty much the same. Um, the structure window also now shows all of the different functions in the JavaScript file, which is super useful. Now probably the biggest change with this version um, is in how the parameters within components are laid out. So if I open a text box, this is a good one to show it to you. Um, previously, most components just had basic, advanced, and maybe some others. Um, we now have a lot more uh, distinction between them. So um, most components will have layout. So this has things like the size of the stimulus, its position, um, for text box, you've got how much padding uh, between the text and the borders of the uh, stimulus, that kind of thing. Um, most will have appearance, so this is for controlling colors, the opacity of the stimulus uh, for text box, the border width. Um, anything that uses text will have formatting tabs, so this controls how the text looks, what kind of font 
uh, what kind of you know, how tall is the letter that kind of thing um, another neat little addition um, you can now use any Google font so if you go to um, let's open my web browser fonts.google.com you can see here loads of free to use fonts and Psychopi is now capable of going onto this website and downloading the font for you um, and just using it straight away without it having to be installed on your machine in your experiment. So that's a pretty cool little thing. So in addition to uh, rearranging the parameters within the components, um, we've also added some neat little controls. So for example, in the form component, um, I think one of the big challenges with the form component was remembering what headings to put in the Excel file. If you leave that blank and click this new Excel button, it'll tell you, you know, once you've saved your table, remember to add it to the uh, dialog box. And then in Excel, it'll create a new table with all of the headings that you need already there, uh, along with kind of handy pointers on what they all mean. And uh, all file uh, dialogues, so that includes, if we go to stimuli, choose image, that includes things like the image, um, now have this button. This basically just opens file browser, so that's quite quite handy. And we also have uh, color controls. So for anything that requires you to specify a color, if you click this button, it opens this new color picker. Um, so again, thank you to Matthew Cutone, uh, who did a lot of work on this. Um, so we have down here all of the kind of named colors that Psychopi will recognize. So most people know that you can do red, blue, uh, yellow, that kind of thing. But um, there's a whole load more, so like honeydew, hot pink, khaki, lavender. Um, and you can specify them as RGB values, like that. And it will automatically tell you what the hex value is. Um, A, by the way, is alpha, so that's just the opacity of the color. Uh, you specify it in our own color space that we use that's centered around zero, which is useful for vision scientists. Uh, you can specify it in normalized RGB from zero to one, uh, or in 8-bit RGB from zero to 255. You can also specify in HSV, HSB. Uh, you can choose what space to output it in, and you can copy it as a value or as a new uh, color object, which is pretty neat. So if I press Control and V, um, so colors is a module within Psychopy, and color is a new type of object that makes it a lot easier to handle colors. So among the new things we've added in this version is a new component uh, called the button component. And it's basically, um, previously people would add say an image or a text stimulus or a text box, uh, and then add a mouse component and a code component and uh, use the code component to say if the mouse component has been clicked on this um, and that worked great but you know there's a lot of things to juggle there um, so the button component basically just brings all of these together uh, it's got a mouse component in it so it can tell whether or not it's been clicked on uh, you can set it to you know, when this button is pressed force the end of the routine or not uh, you can add some text because it's basically just a text box um, and you can add a custom callback function. So this sounds complicated, but really all it means is just a bit of code that runs when the button is clicked. So for example, print success, and that'll just print success to the, uh, to the standout of the runner. Uh, you can also choose whether or not to run it once per click or for it to run every frame so long as the button is clicked. Um, kind of a subtle difference, but it does matter in quite a lot of experiments. And then most of the other settings are pretty much the same as text box. Uh, you can change what the text color is, the fill color, whether it has an outline, what font it's in. Uh, the default is Arvo, which is a Google font. Um, so that's showing off the new, the new fonts. Um, and yeah, so that should hopefully make a lot of experiments a lot simpler and just let you kind of cut down on a, a, lot, of the, a lot of the fluff. Okay, and the last thing, and this is one to be wary of, uh, there has been a bit of a change to how slider functions. So basically, okay, to open a slider. Uh, most of it is pretty similar. However, 
um, sliders now have uh, kind of three color values in addition to styles and style tweaks. Um, now we've uh, done quite a lot to make sure that your slider stays consistent uh, from the last version to this without necessarily needing change, but just um, be aware that uh, there is a difference in how you specify it. So uh, you can now specify the color of the labels, the color of the marker, the color of the line. For uh, sliders which don't have a line, which have a box, uh, that's just the color of the box. Um, and then the style of the slider, which is now single choice rather than multiple choice. So uh, you can make it slider style, you can have rating style, which is uh, like the old rating scale component. Uh, radio style, which is a kind of you know, multiple choice uh, button boxes. Uh, and a new one, scroll bar, uh, which is designed to look like the scroll bar on a, um, on a browser or a text editor. Um, and this new uh, thing, style tweaks, um, these were previously included as styles, um, but these make more sense as a multiple choice thing that's applied on top of the style. So we've kind of moved them to their own thing. Uh, if you had these in before, it will just put them in the styles menu and it should render the slider exactly as before. But yeah, just because it's a bit different, um, it's worth going through your experiments and checking your sliders to make sure that they've got all the right settings for what you want them to look like. And that pretty much covers most of the changes um, that have happened in this version of Cyclipi. Um, as always, thanks for watching. Um, there are a few kind of smaller tweaks that I have not gone over in this video. Um, please do click the link in the description to see a full uh, change log. And uh, yeah, I will see you when the next version comes out. Thanks for watching.